Hello my lovelies, this is a reading for Pisces for the month of April 2019. For many of you, it is now a time for clarity. It feels like there's been a, um, <laughs> you've had Mr Magoo's glasses on if you um, know who Mr Magoo was. Um, I'm showing my age here, you can Google him I'm sure. Um, it was a cartoon, American cartoon, way back probably in the 1950s or 60s. Um, and he had like um, um, these really thick bottle end glasses um, and he mistook all sorts of um, things around him and had this funny little, um, funny little voice. Um, but he always seemed to come out of whatever um, pickles he got himself into. So um, I, I think I'm being shown him because there, for some of you, uh, you haven't been able to see the wood for the trees. You haven't been able to see clearly for um, quite some time. And and having come through Mercury retrograde in your sign of Pisces, um, and Mercury still in Pisces at the moment, um, there may have, may have been a time of great confusion for you that um, um, not only have you not been able to see clearly, but... Um, there may have been deception around you and, and um, people feeding you false information. You know, apart from fake news, it's, it's false information. And um, uh, I feel also maybe for one or two of you, um, you've been very hard on yourselves with regards to um, how you look, how you feel, how... Um, your self-confidence, your um, your sense of self, and that's shifting and changing now, um, because you've come through this period of change of um, looking within, going over things, and Pisces is represented by the two fish swimming in opposite directions, one heading upwards and one heading heading down to the depths. For some of you where the energy has gone down to the depths it could have left you feeling very low very depressed um uh, almost like you were drowning in um um overwhelmment overwhelmment feeling so pressurized so like held under the water and couldn't come up for air but as i say that energy shifting and changing more clarity coming so it's interesting that the, the oracle cards that have shown up for you and I just know that they're going to um, give you a boost, give you a sense of um, I'm on the right path, I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing, I'm, I have clarity, I'm very aware of what that person or that situation said to me is false. So I'm removing my energies from that because I know it it doesn't serve me and it's a very low um, low level vibration and I'm focusing now on um, lifting my energies, lifting my vibration, my consciousness to um, being with and around people who do value me, who do um, see that those gifts and those skills that I have within me. A couple of the, the, the cards have come up on, on the surface um, can appear to be negative but there's a lovely underlying um, positive energy with it so your animal card is the swan and the number is 39 so 39 reduces to 12 12 reduces to 3 3 is associated with the joy of living the joie de vivre and how we express ourselves so swan energy, when it shows up, is all about um, grace. So you see when a swan goes swimming by, it's, it's beautiful, it's graceful, but there's an awful lot of activity going on underneath the water. And with the story of the, uh, the ugly duckling um, and how it was bullied and um, ridiculed by those around it, 
with feathers all stubby and brown. This is you going through the, this extraordinary transformation with grace and bringing yourself back to a sense of um, self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth. And this is also about trusting in great spirit and the mystery of things and how things show up at exactly the right time. So the divine timing. So if some of you have had um, low self-esteem with body awareness, the shape of you, um, how you look, um, what you're unhappy with, what you're dissatisfied with about your body shape or um, how you feel you present yourself to the world, there is a beautiful positive change with that. So with the story of the ugly duckling, <clears throat> he hid himself away, um, not, not wanting to be um, looked at by others because he felt so dowdy. But then a short while later, he came out from hiding and was swimming along. And all the other swans said, oh, wow, isn't he graceful? Isn't she beautiful? Look at that fabulous creature with the snowy white feathers and the great long neck. So you are going through this extraordinary transformation. In a way it's to do with how you view yourself physically, but also it's how you view yourself internally. So the changes that are going on um, on a very deep level with regard to your um, sense of self, yes your physical self, but also your spiritual self, your higher aspect. When grace steps into our lives, it's being able to accept who we are, how we look, how we come across to others, and being happy with that. And when you are resonating at that level, something magical occurs when that grace enters in because no matter how you feel you look or you show yourself to the world others see you differently they see that light within you they see that those beautiful white feathers they see your shiny self your true self so the energy with you at the moment through april is about coming out of that um dowdy um, unappealing self-deprecation, um, self-loathing perhaps for some of you. Um, I know people do have body issues, but there's this shift and change within you. There's a, a feeling of um, connecting with that higher aspect which says you are a divine being of light in a physical body. You are loved, you are cherished throughout eternity. You shine so brightly and people can see beyond any negative traits you may feel that you have. And as this change happens, as this grace visits you, you will no longer see yourself in that light. So there will be no self-criticism, there will be no um, lack of self-esteem. Much more of a feeling of, um, this is who I am. I'm happy in my own skin, in my own body. And when we acknowledge that to the universe, changes start to occur. I've said this for um, one of the other um, signs. I met someone the other day who said, I'll be happy when I lose two stone. And I said, no, that's the wrong way around. If you're basing your happiness on 
loss of weight and how you look, you will never find happiness. Happiness is already within you and it's nobody else's job to make you happy. So when we can unlock that, tap into the happiness that is within you, then that shifts things within you physically and the weight will drop off. So I suggested an affirmation for her. I am happy and I've lost two stone. So placing it in the now, not in the future, when I'll be happy when I lose two stone. By placing it in the now, because that's where we live, we don't live in the past, we don't live in the future. If you think of the past, you're doing it now. If you think of the future, you're doing it now. So when we make statements, affirmations, I am happy and I've lost two stone. I am happy and I have a lovely new wardrobe of clothes. I am happy and people see that happiness shining from me. And people are happy to be in my company. And people are happy to offer me employment. And people are happy to buy the products that I make because I am happy in everything that I do. So the little mini drawn card says, accept the gift of grace, surrender to the flow, don't give up, give over. So when the gift of grace is offered to you, accept it, because you deserve it. Surrender to the flow. So being Pisces, you're a water sign, you're a little fish. If you try and swim upstream, it's jolly hard work. I know, you know when the salmon go um, upstream to spawn, they've come all the way from the oceans, hundreds and hundreds of miles, and their focus is, I must um, give birth, but then they're going to die. <laughs> um, that's the end result of things. So the effort that they put in to get back upstream um, results in their um, expiring, but then there's this new generation coming. So um, with a lot of you, this is give up that struggle of trying to swim upstream. Surrender to the flow. So allow the universe... Um, to take you down that stream of life and around those bends and around those rocks and over the waterfalls and the rapids. Whatever comes to meet you in your life, when you surrender to it, rather than battling against it, you will find yourself going with the flow and with that sense of grace. Don't give up. Give over, really mini surrender. So if you have an idea or you have a dream or you have a goal, something you wish to bring into your life, don't give up on it, but surrender it. Hand it over. Hand it over to the universe, to your higher self, and say, um, in my human self, I feel I can't do this on my own. I can't manifest this. I can't bring this into my life. But that's just your human self, your fear-based ego. When we hand it over, surrender it to our higher aspect, we are getting out of the way. We, meaning our ego, get out of the way. So there's no self-sabotage, there's no criticism, there's no um, feeling of undeservedness. Because the universe is abundant and wishes to bring you all this wonderful stuff. So... In surrendering, you tend to think, oh, you know, white flag, oh, I've given up. But really, you give it over, hand it over to that higher aspect, your soul, because your soul knows exactly what it is that you desire, what you deserve, and what the universe wishes to bring to you. When we battle against anything, like, so I can't lose weight, or I... Um, 
can't get the job that I want or I can't get the relationship that I'd like, you are actually battling against something which is called lack. So if you were affirming, I can't lose weight, I can't get the job, I can't get the relationship, you were affirming the lack of something. And guess what you get? The lack of it. It's not going to show up. So by giving it over, handing it over to that higher aspect, part of you gets out of the way, you go with the flow, and then around the next bend, something's going to show up. And this is what's going to show up. <laughs> it's abundance, yay! So there's a little angel there, and it's an abundance of fruit and veggies, and more and more and more and more keeps coming. So if we have a block on abundance, prosperity, deserving stuff, that block is being lifted. So it's like um, not only no longer trying to swim upstream, but the dam has burst. So whatever um, blocks have been in your way, whatever dams have stopped things flowing in your life, they're all being moved. They're all being shifted out of the way. Okay, I'm hearing the word deluge, um, which usually means a, a great deal of water and um, lots of it <laughs> um, washing over you. So if you've had despair, if you've had um, a sense of feeling stuck or um, a lack of things in your life, this deluge of water is washing things away. So it's washing the dam away, it's washing your tears away, it's washing your despair away. Because water is emotion. Water represents emotion, but also intuition. So you are a very intuitive sign, Pisces. You have that ability to know. It's a deep inner knowingness. And so it's being able to tap into that now and not doubting it. So when it feels, I know that, I know that's coming, um, and not denying um, that knowingness when um, you're thinking of someone and the phone rings and it's them. Or you haven't seen someone in a very long time and you're thinking about them, boom, that's who's just going to show up around the bend. So that's that intuitive um, gut instinct that you know, if I follow this path, something great's going to show up. I know if I follow that path, it could be a bit dodgy. So abundance is within you. It's not out there. It is actually within you. It's tapping into that energy that you already hold, that you've been resisting. Now your self-mastery card is patient you think oh Lord, how much longer do i have to wait um but my sense of this is you're at the end of a very long wait you're at the end of a long long cycle so as we've come out of um your birth energy pisces energy um and the mercury retrograde in pisces the patience that you've had or had to have during that time that has brought you to a, um, a culmination, so things starting to show up at last. So it says, as a master, I understand that everything has to happen in its own good time. I am not rushed or anxiously waiting for people to change. Because we can't force people to change. When we change, others around us change. So when we change our belief systems or our thought forms or our um, or we're doing things, our energy immediately shifts to another vibration. And so you will find that when you are in the company of others, your shift in consciousness will affect them. And it's quite an interesting um, um, process 
to watch it happen. Um, and many years ago, I was studying um, shiatsu, which is a, a Japanese uh, form of therapy. Shi means finger and atsu means pressure. So it's a form of acupuncture, but without, but without the needle. You just press into points. Um, and so I was studying this um, amazing modality. Um, and over the weeks and the months and the years that I studied it, I changed. Subtly to begin with, and then quite dramatically, um, and it shifted me in a, in a in a very profound way. So whilst I was studying, I had to practice on people. Um, so I practiced on my family and my friends, and it was fascinating to watch how, when I did treatments on them, the next time I visited and went to see them, shifts had occurred. Uh, isn't this interesting? So I realise you, you cannot um, force people to change. You cannot put your demands on others and say, I will only let you in my life if you're like this, this, this and this. And there was a lovely story associated with uh, Shiatsu that my um, master taught me. And he said there was a, a young girl, a young Japanese girl, who'd fallen in love with this young boy and they wanted to be together and they wanted to marry but his mother was an absolute nightmare she was uh, controlling she was demanding she was like victim mode so when this girl married the boy they went to live with the boy's mother and it was it was awful it really was she she didn't feel comfortable being there and um she decided she wanted to get rid of the mother-in-law so she went along the village and she found the um, medicine man the apothecary and she asked him for some poison so that she could kill her mother-in-law oh goodness me it was that she felt that drastic about it and so this apothecary said to her, here's the poison, but for it to work, you have to do it very, very slowly over many, many months. And for it to work properly, you need to give her a shiatsu treatment when you give her the tincture. Oh, she said, right then. So she went back home and she gave a few drops of this to her mother-in-law and she said, oh, Mama-san, let me give you some shiatsu. And Mama-san said, okay. So over the weeks, she continued giving the poison and giving Mama-san a treatment. And as the weeks and the months went on, her attitude to her mother-in-law changed completely and she began to love her and she thought oh my goodness I'm killing her I'm, I'm poisoning her so she rushed back to the apothecary and she said oh please can you give me an antidote please can you give me something to reverse um, this poison because I found that giving mama son the treatments I love her and she's very precious to me and I don't want her to die. And she was really, really distraught and the apothecary said to her, I gave you water in a little bottle. So he knew that on a deep level this girl didn't want her mother-in-law to die and he knew that by telling her to add the shiatsu within this process that as she thought she was just treating the mum she was actually changing within herself and so I feel that this little tale will assist some of you 
in that there may be a person, there may be a situation around you where you feel you could hate someone, you could feel antagonistic towards someone, you could feel I really don't want them in my life, but they're there. And so how you approach it now is in such a way that when you look at them, you know that they are an aspect of you. Anyone who comes into our lives shows up as a mirror, as an aspect of ourselves. And how we feel about them will show us what we need to work on. When you love someone, then that love is reflected between the two of you. But when you dislike someone or you hate someone, that is being flagged up. What do I hate or dislike about myself? Ooh, how do we go about fixing that? So this is self-love, this is self-care, extreme self-care. Um, when you give to another, you give to yourself. When you give to yourself, you give to another. For you and another are one. So here we have a wicker card. And this is very interesting. This is called the Cone of Power energy and so you see the symbols on it there's the pentacle the chalice the candle and the feather so these are all tools which are used to bring wisdom now the cone of power in the eastern tradition it's like a little paper cap or hat. And in ancient times in the West, it has been known as a dunce's cap and or a witch's hat. And the reason it was put on kids' heads in the classroom was the teacher thought that the child was stupid or not paying attention They'd stand the child in the corner and put this paper or cardboard funnel cap on his head and he had to face the wall and he might have to stand there for the whole lesson and he was um, admonished, not just by the teacher, but um, shown an, as an example to the other kids. You know that you need to learn, you need to pay attention. But the whole um, basis of this was that the cone, being a cone of power, was placed upon the head and it was a funnel for divine consciousness, for wisdom, for information to come through. It's the same with the witch's hat, the Harry Potter's um, hat. When it's placed upon the witch's head, Again, the information would come through from the divine wisdom, um, spells, solutions to things. But even in the um, Christian tradition, cardinals, popes would wear a mitre, which again is a cone of power. And they place it on their head so they have direct contact with the divine. So this has shown up for you guys. For you to acknowledge, well, you're not stupid. You're not thick. You have abilities way beyond what many others can do. So it's imagining this cone, it can be like an inverted, um, like a pyramid over the top of your head and allowing that divine energy to pour through from the universe into your consciousness, into your pineal gland. 
and down into your whole body. So in a sense, this is an awakening energy. If you've been struggling with finding solutions or answers to issues in your life, whether it's within relationships, whether it's to do with your work and your career, and or your spiritual awakening, the energy of this card is like activating codes within you. We have the divine codes within us, within our DNA, within our um, skeletons. There are crystals, um, crystalline structure within your pineal gland. It's the size of a little pine cone um, and around it is a watery liquid and within that liquid are crystals. So we know that crystals have the ability to transmit and receive information, like the crystal radios. So we have that within us. And when the pineal gland, we are able to receive divine information and to broad broadcast divine information. So there's an opportunity for you in the month of April to find a, a quiet place, whether it's in your home or it's in nature. Good idea to be near water because you're a water sign, so by the ocean, a river, a lake, um, a pond, and sit quietly 10, 15 minutes. And just imagine this cone of sparkling diamond white energy hovering over the top of your head and just letting that information flow and just look what shows up see what turns up so in the past it was um in a way to do with the elite, with the um, religious um, way of looking at things with the, as I say, with the Pope and his mitre. And it had a, um, a negative um, spin to it with the dunce's cap. But actually, it is a, an incredible... So sorry, we got, we got cut off. Um, the meaning of... Uh, dunce is a, uh, a person who is slow learning, but it actually comes from a follower, follower of the 13th century theologian, John Duns Scotus, whose followers were ridiculed by humanists as enemies of learning. And also the symbol on the cone of power um, is the secret name of God. It is Yahweh. So in the um, Kabbalistic tradition, the name of God was not to be spoken, but those symbols on that cone actually say Yahweh, which is God. So when this cone is placed upon our heads, we have this divine connection that nothing else can interfere with. So this is being gifted to you in the month of April so for a lot of you who've been feeling little um, nudges about waking up um, to the spiritual um, side of your life this can, can be the impetus to really get you to um, feel motivated and actually go with it so to finish off we're going to have a card from the angels of abundance pack so these were just recently gifted to me and there's this lovely new crispy energy to them. So I'm really delighted to share one of these cards with you. Ooh, savings. Here we are. So it's a little, beautiful little angel. Sunshine on it in the garden looking at all the different blossoms and what it says is 
As you consistently save for your future, your future is saved. You do your future self a big favour as you consistently set aside present funds. This is a part of your self-care and path to feeling secure as you focus upon your life purpose. So I've said this to um, one or two of the other um, signs for this month. Sometimes when our purse strings are really tight <clears throat> and we feel we can't afford this or that um, and a big bill is coming in or a, a, an unexpected expense shows up, part of you might feel, well, I can't afford to put anything away this month. But a nice little um, way of doing this savings is you have a jar or a pot um, on your table when you come in from work or wherever it is you've been and you put all the change from your purse or your wallet into that pot and that is the beginning of your savings so you are setting an intention you're showing the universe I have enough I have more than enough and I'm going to put some of it in this pot and then over the weeks it builds up at the end of the month you can pay it into the bank or some other sort of saving scheme and you will notice over time that it won't just be the pennies it won't just be the silver you might think oh I can afford to put a, a note in this week and as you do that you may also find that um, other forms of income start to show up so when we limit ourselves to thinking oh the money can only come to me through this job I'm doing and I can only earn this much because that's my annual salary then you're limiting yourself to what the universe can deliver to you so once we step out of that sense of um, financial restriction and the sense of lack things come knocking at your door and you think oh where did that come from it could literally be um, the postcode lottery if you pay into that each month um, um, but also things coming to you from uh, deeds that you've done in the past that you might have forgotten about so you might have done a good deed for someone not ever thinking for um, doing it for a reward just out of the um, kindness of your heart but the universe does pay attention and it will bring something to you when you really really need it um, um, there is a um, a saying of ARK, acts of random kindness. So when people do something for somebody else, it's just a random act, um, a spontaneous feeling of, yes, I just want to help someone and um, having the ability to do so. So whether it's monetarily or it's helping someone across the road or um, just handing something to somebody as you pass, even a smile is an act of random kindness. And then something comes back to you, maybe not from the same person, but it'll come back to another door. So for all of you this month, there's this change and shift of um, how you look at life. It's never going to be the same again. You will view it in a completely different way, in a refreshing way, in a much more open way of being able to receive and also what you can... Um, give to others it's not about giving so much of you or yourself that you're um, depleted and empty it's about giving freely saving what it is you feel you can happily put into that pot at the end of each week and just watch how things start to build now here I did two of my paintings, so this is Abundance and Prosperity, and they're um, canvas boards. So the energy of these paintings, the energy of abundance, the energy of prosperity, I gift to you for this month and beyond. When you see words, when you hear them spoken, or you speak them yourselves, that activates the energy or vibration of that word. So you seeing these words, me speaking them and gifting them to you, that is activating abundance and prosperity within you. 
So I'd love to hear your comments. Um, let me know how things are um, panning out for you in your lives. If you're interested in uh, any of my artwork, these are available to buy, as I say, as uh, canvas boards and greeting cards. I take commissions for what I call my inspirational art. Um, and if any of you would like to have a, a private session with me, uh, then all the details are in the box below. So um, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please share and subscribe and hit the wiggly bell so that you know next time I'm going to upload some things for you. Enjoy your April. Please enjoy your April and um, open yourself up to the, these magnificent changes, uh, miracles, um, instant manifestations. And whatever the divine wishes to um, download into you through this cone of power. So again, thank you for watching. I love you all. See you next time. Bye.